the number one trap for building your note-taking system is over-engineering it. Yes, everybody does it. I've done this for years, but there's two things that I'm gonna share with you in this video that help you get over it. But first, I wanted to tell you about PKM Kickstart. It's a free resource that I have available to you. You can sign up in the description below that helps you get started on your personal knowledge management and note-taking journey. Just about any question you might have at the beginning is answered in this, and if it's not answered, just respond to me in the email and I will definitely find an answer for you or we'll make a video for you here on the channel. But that's completely for free and you can sign up in the description below. So why do we over-engineer? Let's talk about that a little bit first before we dive into those couple of steps. First, you get inspired. You see other people's systems being built through all these great educational resources that are out there and you think, wow, I could build a system like that too. So you overreach maybe a little bit and build a little bit too far. I've done this many of times. Or maybe you're not sure where to start. I've done this too, where I copy somebody else's system feature for feature, use case, case for use case, and it doesn't really go all that well. Or maybe you just see tons of potential on what you could build in that app. Or maybe you're just not clear on what you wanna get out of the app. Being clear on your outcome is really important when you're system building, and if you have 15 different outcomes you're trying to chase, it might not go so well for you, and you might over-engineer in the process. So how do you combat over-engineering? Well, those two steps are editing and refactoring. Editing is all about inserting an extra step between the ideation and build phase of your system. Ideation is where you come up with all the ideas, you do all the learning, you make that brainstorming list, and many of us just jump from ideation into building. But instead, we need to take some time and edit in the middle. Editing in the middle is cutting out all the cruft of things that mm, I might not actually need or use that right now. And instead, what we do is we're building a minimum viable system. Minimum viable system is an idea based off of minimum viable product from the business world. MVPs or basically a small packaged product that will give some inclination of will this work in the marketplace? It's a very light effort. Minimum viable system is really just the minimum amount of features and use cases to get you toward your desired outcome. Again, this is why being clear on your outcome for your system is so important up front. So how do you do this? How do you get better at editing? You just have to have a mindset of when you're building a system, do the ideation, but then intentionally take some time to think about what do I really actually need? And start with just a few things. You can keep a list of other things you wanna build into the system for later, which leads us into the second aspect of the process, which is refactoring. Refactoring is a term that comes from software engineering where developers will go in and they will rewrite a section of a piece of code to be more efficient, to be structured more clearly, to use more or fewer libraries, things of that sort. How we reply refactoring to our systems then is making an intentional checkpoint on asking ourselves some questions. So the way that I would approach this is, okay, you've built your system, now use it, and don't make any meaningful changes to it for a while, say a month or three months, maybe even six months, depending on how often you're using the system. And then from there, take a pause. Maybe put this as a recurring task in your task manager or on your calendar to say, okay, I've built this system, I'm asking myself three questions. First, what's working? Second, what's not working? And third, what do I want to change? And from those answers, you can make some intentional decisions about what you would like to change in your system. The whole idea here is that as you use the system, you're going to encounter areas where you maybe wanna add a use case or a feature to it. Maybe there's points of the system where you're adding information in or retrieving information out, and there's a lot of extra friction. Or maybe you just wanna increase the usability of it. Maybe you're realizing that the app that you chose really isn't working out the way that you thought it was going to, which frankly, if you're picking an application, it takes probably three to six months to really understand if that app is going to work for you or not, because your brain has to adjust to the way the app 
is working versus you're gonna understand it right away out the gate. And so then from there, you take those ideas, again, being very thoughtful about which ones you're going to implement and then work on making those changes. And then work on it for another month to six months, check in with yourself again, and do the same process. Eventually you'll have a system that you feel pretty confident in that's shaped to the way that you're working. Plus these checkpoints also give you an opportunity to make changes to your system as life changes, because we all know we change jobs, we move, we have kids or we get married, and then our whole life priorities tend to change at that point. And then these systems need to flex and flow with that as well. So if you've been stuck in an over-engineering trap with your productivity or note-taking system, know that you are not alone. I've done this so many times. But if you take some intentional time to think through editing, and if you take some time regularly to go through and refactor your system and make iterative improvements as you go, you'll find yourself in a much better place down the road. Now, if you're interested in seeing what I'm doing inside of my system right now and how I have engineered it, click on the link to this video here.